Rut row, raggy. <laughs> Rut row indeed, Ramuel. What's going on? It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance on this fine evening, Maxwell. And in our lovely city of Brisbane, it's dropped below 20 degrees, which means I've got the pants and hoodie. I've got the longs, I've got the, the hoods. Last week you were similar hood, yeah. but the pins were right out. The pins were out and it was a little bit misleading, you know? Oh, misleading. Am I cold? Am I yeah, not? It was the shorts confusing. and the hoodie is such a Queensland thing. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, but it's been a busy week. We've both attended gigs. Gig City. And it's been a busy fortnight, really. We've seen a lot of international artists. Bit on in a in, uh, little... No, adjust. Adjust No, because this arm's... I'm sitting up fucking Harry High... Oh, Harry oh, High arm. A posture... Sh- po- posture. A posture... <laughs> sh- posh- wow, well, I can't talk. Posture, Sam, should be much better. As should your pronunciation, Maxwell. Yes. We did have all those literacy classes early in our childhood. Exactly. And I failed all of them. You did, but that's okay. Don't let that get in the way of your progress. I still don't have a pen license. I don't think I do either. Ooh, mm. we're, we're both unlicensed. Here. I think we are. We're potting unlicensed. The, if, the, if the fucking five O's swing by, we're fucked. Are you okay? <laughs> Many have questioned. I'm just going to put this a bit, yeah, a bit closer. Yeah, there just going to put it a little bit closer to my. Uh, your dulcet tones, Sam. Yes, yeah. but uh, on that professional note, something new this week, Maxwell. Let's get straight into it. Yeah, throw it at me. You saw. Mm. One of the direction boys. I went in one direction. That's two boondle, Sam, to see Niall Horan. And I'll tell you what, spoiler alert, belter of a gig. Real good. And I like I, I went in kind of not knowing what to expect. Like, um, I, I got the tickets uh, mostly for my lovely girlfriend, who is a bit of a fan, a bit of a Niall Horan fan. Um, That's such an ick. I'm such... I think what you're going to say is that's so romantic. And uh, you dropped the first part of that word and you just had ick at the end, so it's a bit weird. Romant <laughs> would be the bit that you missed. Um, Romantic. Yeah, exactly. The Yeah, so, I mean, what, 10... Well, when, when did One Direction form? 2010? Uh, whenever Simon formed them. Yeah, so 2010. So what's that, 14 years of like... Niall. Being told how to fucking be a showman. He's got it down pat. Like he's got... Well, you'd hope so. Good pipes. He's got he's got good stage presence, good audience banter. Um, he's all of his all these tracks are like kind of like classic rock vibes. Like that the the pre show they do like it's Fleetwood Mac and ABBA and Joan Jett and that kind of stuff. And then he rips into his set. It's bloody awesome. He did his first <laughs> shoey. My, yeah, that was a bit of a that was a bit of a bit oh. of a me moment there. <laughs> Uh, did his first shoey ever, which is actually uh, pretty impressive to see him just just ripped one out, poured the old uh, Bolter Cerveza straight into that bad boy, yep. uh, into the, into the lefty, I think I believe, and just fucking downed it. Um, but I don't know how I feel about them. About an international shoey? Yeah, just a shoey in general. I feel like I mean I've done plenty in my time. I reckon I've done one. You've done one. I think it's a little bit overhyped. Overhyped. I mean. I did also drink in in a bad game of King's Cup at your birthday one year. I drank uh, uh, soy sauce, I believe it was. Soy sauce mixed with sweet chili, I believe. Yeah, it wasn't fun um, (laughs) because the rest was vodka. But um, that's neither here nor there when it comes to Niall. Um, I think I'm going to go out there. I reckon maybe except Harry Styles' best One Direction solo career. Like his songs are, there's a couple that were a bit like slower and soppier Mm. um, that are, Mostly off his new album, but then there was like there was one track um, that I'm gonna have to pull up my the, the playlist. I'm gonna pull up my phone to see which one it was. But there was one track that was like it could have been "Boys of Summer" by Don Henley. Great song, great song, and he he like he gave it an absolute nudge. The band was so good, um, like his backing band. No, no, Horn and far out. I'll let you. I'm gonna try that one again. Yeah, yeah. But now it's not gonna be funny. Was it Niall Horn and the Horn section? That it could have been the Horn section. The Horn. Um, I believe the one that uh, that I was thinking of is "If You Leave Me," or maybe it's the show. Maybe it's both. It, it's, maybe you enjoyed. Both. It's from the album, the show. Um, this is the greatest show. Opened with "Nice to Meet You" and closed with "Slow Hands," which the two they were the two like big singles from his solo stuff. Um, you'd probably know "Nice to Meet You." It was it was kind of it took off. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Where you been? Not quite, but that'll be oh. close. Um, but yeah, dropped a Edge of Seventeen by Stevie Nicks cover in, and uh, unfortunately we watched a young girl next to us um, Shazam that, 
which was quite uh, quite sad to see. Yeah, that is quite sad. Um, I feel I felt like leaning over and saying it's actually bootylicious by Destiny's Child, but yeah. um, London Bridge, Fergie. I think she I think she would have not gotten the the irony. The, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I would if like I I I went in not really knowing what I was going to get coming out. I'd definitely go back. Like if I had my time again, knowing all this, I'd be back in for sure. Right. Yeah. And can we talk about how annoying it is getting out of a big concert? Yeah, Boondle, always a bit of a time. Especially I drove. Uh, it, was, yeah. it was a Sunday night. It was a school night. Um, so I drove and um, it did take us the better part of probably half an hour to get out mm. of our car park, which was next to the door. Yeah. So Well, can I... I've got a bone to pick. Please. The perfect day for a gig. Yeah. Because I feel like it's either prime. There's two days. There's a two-day window where it's prime. And then there's five other days where it is... He's good at maths. Not ideal. Yeah, yeah. five plus two is seven. Maths, A. Eh? <laughs> but... Maths, eh? Maths, <laughs> eh? Um, but I feel like if it's a Friday or Saturday night, you're already going to have a good time at the gig because you can have a late night, you wake up, and you've got another day to roll on. Yep. Sunday through to a Thursday gig... I'll say Sunday through a Wednesday gig. Thursday night's a pretty good night for a gig. I was going to say, that's yeah. why I went Sunday through yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. No good. Yeah. I'm second guessing going to the gig if it's a Sunday through a Wednesday. Here's the thing. Okay, I, I agree with you on, on the surface of it. Yeah. But I also, I think as a bigger problem, I think that's part of the problem with especially Queenslanders, but Australians mm-hmm. in general, is that Monday through, let's say Thursday, are a, a write-off. No one does anything on those days. And like... We're giving away like five nights out of five out of seven a yeah. week that we're not doing. Like I feel like bring it, bring back those nights, you know. Student night, Wednesday night, student night. But it, but like it, you don't like sure. I think maybe the difference is that we're not staying out till like two in the morning. But like yeah. maybe shift shift your gigs an hour earlier on a oh, school night. I was talking about that. Yeah, I was talking about that to my girlfriend the other night because we went and saw Black. Yep. Or Six Lack for those who know the name, for the but SEO. not the pronunciation. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we were saying. It's tough for these international headliners who don't necessarily have the full run of like two or three bands yep. or artists opening for them. They bring one main support, but the doors will open at seven. Yeah. Sometimes the entertainment center. They're at five. They're at something. five, but the first artist is until eight. Yeah. 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 So you've got a minimum hour before gap between doors and artist, mm-hmm. and then they play for half an hour. But then the main artist still doesn't come on till. Nine, nine fifteen. They play for an hour and a half. You're not out till ten thirty, ten forty five. Yep. And I mean, yep. eleven is curfew, but still, it's too late on a Sunday. I've got, I've got a life to, I've got a, a life that I need to afford. Well, Nile, Nile kicked off at eight thirty. Oh, that's elite. And rap was wrapped almost bang on ten. Like he, he had a ninety minute set that included probably a ten minute. Crowd banter seg, like yep. you know, a built in the band gets a break. <laughs> so happy to be here. Well, that's when he did his first shoey. Uh, um, and he played Paper Scissors Rock with a girl in the audience. He he had a chat with the girl to see if she wanted to quit her job. Like, you know, it was, it was, like he was like good at interactive mm. with the with the fans. Great if you're that person, but boring to the 15,000 no, other people. Well, here's the thing I think because he's been doing this for so long, he's pretty good at like keeping the rest of the crowd engaged. Yeah, true. like, like he, he does a bit of like, should this girl quit her job? Let's get a fucking cheer kind of thing. Yeah, um, so. Yeah, like it. I think like Jen, one of those probably like Robbie Williams when you saw him a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago. Yeah, weeks. What a weeks and the months. other day. The other day. The yeah. other day. Uh, you know, just like a good like a good entertainer, like a professional showman who kind of knows mm. what to do, how to get the crowd excited. Knows his role, plays his role, executes his role. Yeah, exactly. Mm. You know, uh, he, he do it right, do it once, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, work smart, not hard. Exactly. Yeah. Measure twice, cut once. Yeah, yeah. Look left, look right, look left again. Yeah. Yeah, hits by the stop dropping on. Run. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll quickly quickly yeah, well, so change about, my mind. Tell me about Black. Well, yeah, because uh, I went yeah, to Black. Yeah, uh, he was at the Fortitude Music Hall, which oh, seems yeah. to be where every band and, and artist in Brisbane or t- coming to Brisbane are playing at the moment. It's it's a hot prop. It's a hot prop. It's been a bloody age since I've been to the Trifford or the Tivoli or, and every band that starts at the Tiv gets upgraded anyway. So anyway, back at the Fortitude Music Hall. Yeah, saw Black. If you don't know who he is, he's sort of like this. So I wouldn't say he's soppy, but he's like a heartfelt R and B artist who 
He's done features with T-Pain. He's done... You might know him for On My Way with Khaled, that song. Put no, but I'll, I'll trust you on it. I'll be outside. I'll be on my way. Yep, sure. Yeah, nice. Uh, otherwise, worse luck. You might not... You don't know. I, anyway. I, I, I think the only song that I know, I believe it was an artist called Duckworth who had a yep. feature with him. He's a slut for a feature. Loves a feature. Loves gonna, a feature. I'm going to double check that while you're talking. Loves a feature more than a gambling addict. Bang, that was good. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we went. We were expecting... With an artist like him, you expect a little bit of a low and slow vibe, but that they'd intertwine you know, his faster songs into yep. his set list, and he didn't. Really? It was very slow. Very, like, mellow. Very mellow. There was no oomph added to the live sound. He had a live drummer, a live bassist, and a DJ. Okay. But you know how sometimes R&B artists will add more bass or mm. more fills or yeah. a little bit more instrumentation to their song live that yeah, gives yeah. it a bit more energy? Yeah. None of that. Yeah, right. We didn't make... The encore, really? Well, I, I mean, you famously hate an encore. Hate an encore. Don't try and pull the wool over my eyes. <laughs> you fuck. You haven't even turned your fucking guitar off. <laughs> um, anyway, so would you say it was a, a not a good show? I'd say it was a good show. Right. He was a great singer, but when you're standing up, like if I was seated, mm. oh, I'd stay there the whole bloody nine yards. <laughs> but I was standing up. My feet were starting to hurt, and I wasn't able to like sway or get into it. Just because of who you are as a person. Just because I, I was standing with my arms crossed, obviously, <laughs> um, at the back. <laughs> Don't have fun around me. Fuck off. <laughs> uh, but overall, yeah, it's a good show, but could have been more energetic. Yeah, no, I feel that. Would I, I think, see him again? Probably not. Yeah, right. I think exact opposite for me and Niall Horan. Yeah, like where I went in not knowing what to expect. You know, knowing not knowing the energy level. And I'll tell you what. Like, I mean, it's no surprise that it was packed full of young women like mm. people who were in their teens or people who were in their teens 10 years ago when one direction were at their peak and like so like it, this is not in any way demeaning or that it's it's very like it's that's the crowd and they all, bring a lot of energy well they bring a lot of energy like they're all there's screaming and it is loud like it's i have i have not been in a, in a concert like that's like that loud in a long time since it was the same and it was like it's hard to not kind of get into the vibe it when reaches all a decibel life. level, and then you go deaf. Yeah, like it's kind. Of, but like when, when, like as soon as he came out, the screaming was off the chart. Mm. He launched into the set for, like he's done this a million times. He's, he knows you got to ride that first wave straight into the first song and don't stop for like two or three songs. Just keep it going. And by the time that happens, you're like, I'm in. Like the energy is high. It's fun, and we're getting there. The people around me are already up and dancing, like jumping around. It's hard to not be in that vibe. Well, if you're not up, as soon as they come out, it's pretty much everyone's up. Yeah. And if you're not, then what's the point of being there? Yeah. Which means to me, like, th those are two very different yeah. gig energies. Very much so. I was standing up wanting to sit down. Yeah. Then I got in trouble for uh, trying to sit in a disabled area. Oh, yeah. I didn't know it was a disabled area. <laughs> and then I'll tell you a story because there was this woman. She was probably early 30s, you know, strutting her stuff full of plastic and... Feeling you know, herself. Full of plastic, beers and a good time. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she had some heels on and yep. she decided to sit down, slipped past the security guard he didn't notice. And he yep. came over and said, excuse me, this is a disabled seat. And she goes, I am disabled. Oh, no. And he goes, no, you're not. She goes, I am. I've got a disability. My feet hurt. Oh, no. Why won't... And she went on a tirade, rinsed this poor security guard doing his job. She goes, why won't you let me sit down? I, there's so many spare seats. Why the fuck? Can you just fuck off? Like, <laughs> And the security guard... Looks at her blank, blankly in the eyes and just goes, calm down. <laughs> Always a good start. And then he walked off. I'm like, if I was your superior, <laughs> that is your cue. <laughs> Out of the back line. But I just don't understand. The George Gregor, no, the dive pass. Yeah. There's just no need to be rude to security guards who are doing, who aren't being rude, who aren't being aggressive. They're just informing you that this area is reserved for people that actually can't stand up for a show yeah right fair enough anyway that was a pet peeve i don't like that don't be me don't be rude to people who aren't being rude to you that's true as we always say if you're at a gig don't be a that's it yeah don't be a, a c right i don't like that word but i just say don't be a thanks for bleeping me 
I'm not going to bleep you. I'm just going to leave you. <laughs> I might even zoom in on your hand doing this. Don't be a flipping idiot, you dork. Don't be a silly goose. <laughs> anyway, before we roll into our key topic of the night, mm. I have a question for you. Yeah, hit, hit me, hit me. Is Jojo Siwa legit? Oh, Because she's either so far off the scale that she has no self-awareness. Yeah. Or she's the most committed I have ever seen to satire. To the bit. Yeah, to the bit. Which at the moment is the trend. Some people just commit so hard to the cringe because they get the views, they get the attention. It is hard to watch. But it's all satire. Yeah. But it is so hard to watch. The videos are coming everywhere. Karma's a bitch. (laughs) Like, I think... I don't get it. I think... You know what? I don't think it matters. Like, either way, it's working. Yeah, because we're talking about it. Yeah. I have never... She's everywhere, and people are listening to the song, and I'm like, I don't like the song, but I have listened to it a few times. I'm like, no, "No, just to be like, what's the go? You know what I mean? Like, like the the, the intrigue got me in, and I don't like it, Uh, but I'm like... Dream guest on my podcast? (laughs) Like, I needed... (laughs) I needed to know, because it's just... It's too much. But and now that you've listened to the song, I still haven't listened to it. I only know like the ten second segment I've seen on like TikTok. On TikTok. Yeah, yeah. Now that you've listened to the full song, mm. is Karma in fact a bit? <laughs> I mean, I just like I'm all for like her having the, her, like you know empowered moment where she's like breaking yeah. free of like her like you know. It's the biggest change we've ever seen in music. <laughs> her commercial like teen thing. Okay, here's the thing, right? <laughs> this is for everyone watching. This is you <laughs> searching for something nice to say. I'm not. A, no, it's not even nice to say. I think I feel a bit sorry for her in a way of like, yeah, like she was like a kid when she was like put through this. It's yeah, this whole like thing, and then she's trying to like break out of that by by doing the same thing, but just like the Worse. rock and roll <laughs> version. You know what I mean? Like, hang on, it's more like, like at least when Miley Cyrus did it, it was like. Fucking, she went full wrecking ball and just went into it. Yeah. Like, I feel like this is like the same thing, but with a different hat. And I'm like, oh, or as you say, maybe it's just awesome satire, which either way, I don't think it matters. If it's awesome satire, I'll sit here and be like, hats off to you. Well played. But part of me and a lot of me thinks that it's not. Maybe, I mean, benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Maybe benefit of the doubt. The official 78 amp position is hats off, Jojo. I mean, there's no such thing as bad publicity. That's true. It's working. It's working. But fuck me. <laughs> I'm also... I, but yeah, I'm glued to my screen because every time she's on my phone, I'm like, I think I'm going to want to throw my phone out a window. It's it's hard to watch. Either, either way, it's hard to watch. Like it, In the same way, like, like the UK office is funny, but hard to watch. Yeah. 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 Anyway. You know it's hard to watch, but really funny. What's that? Watching people trip over. <laughs> <laughs> Throw back to Battlesnake. Uh, <laughs> if you're not a long-time listener, go back to our episode about um, gig etiquette. <laughs> if you've ever seen a bloke fall continuously for 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Anyway, uh, let's get serious, shall we? Let's get serious. I wanted to I wanted to ask you a question. A question yeah. that's been plaguing my mind, Sam, for a few weeks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, my, that went up my nose. Oh. Just fizzy. Very mm. fizzy. It's, it really sounds like you're doing coke on, on the podcast, but you're doing Pepsi. <laughs> um, the, I want to know, like, what do you reckon is the sound of the 2020s? We're in 2024. We're nearly halfway through the decade. And I want to I want to ask you what you think like the defining sound, even of the first half of this decade, is or has been. It's a good question because I don't think there is one yet. Right. Which is I know what we're going to talk about, but well, I just I'm with it you. It seems a bit. that there just isn't. I saw this come up. A few people started talking about it because there just is no defining sound. Yeah. It feels like there's not even in previous decades you've got a cluster like you've either got a genre or a cluster of artists or at least three yeah. that you can hang your hat on and be like, they were the biggest artists of that decade. Yeah. 2010s to 2020s, you'd say Ed Sheeran. Yeah. You'd say... 
I don't know. Well, I mean, like the early 2010s, I reckon it was like the the weirdness of like bubblegum pop. Yeah. But then like the extreme of like hard of like hardcore EDM, like you know yeah. dubstep like, and like Skrillex trap came and stuff, in, did and they thing. kind of did this weird merge. Yeah. And so you had like weird like Kesha featuring on like 303 songs and stuff like that. That was really strange, but it was like. Mm. And you know, around, like it was off the back of that easy indie sleaze kind of thing. But yeah, and then the late twenty tens, you had like emotional, like I saw the TikTok music stuff. Yeah, coming in. SoundCloud rappers and mumble rap. Yeah, mumble rap and like I don't know, yeah. even the pop stuff, like Lord and Billie Eilish and stuff, were like really yeah. emotional and like like laid back and stripped back in the music. Yeah, and even though Billie Eilish has come through and she's a big player in the twenty twenties. I still don't think... When you think 2020s music, you don't think Billie Eilish. You no. don't think Ed Sheeran. No. I'd say there's probably two prominent ones at the moment. And yep. that for me is Taylor Swift. Yep. And then I think Scissor is becoming that. Yep. Because you've got extreme Swifties who listen to bubblegum pop that's inoffensive and boring. Yeah. And then you've got a little bit of the edgier pop side of things with Scissor. Mm-hmm. But I just don't think there's... Apart from maybe... But I, I'd say Taylor Swift's up here and Scissor's climbing. Yeah. But she's not there yet. Yeah. There's just no one that's really making a huge... But I mean, even if you... Like, if you take it... Like, those... Taylor Swift and Scissor... Taylor Swift isn't doing anything... I mean, like, musically groundbreaking. Oh, like, no. In the sense that a, a Taylor Swift song from the last three albums is not that dissimilar to a Taylor Swift song from the three albums before that. Yeah. And same with Scissor, like she's a great artist and she's making great music, but like, well, she's just evolving her sound that was in the twenty, the like twenty tens anyway. But I wouldn't even say it's that much of an evolution. It's just like nah. it's pretty straightforward R and B based pop, like mm. which is great. Don't be wrong, but like, wh- who's the new artist that's on the scene? We're like, whoa, fuck, that's like blowing oh, cool. some new away. I mean, the one that comes to mind is Fred again. Yeah, but at the same time, if you've heard one Fred again song. You've heard most of them. Yeah. Because it's just a repetitive sample over a house sort of beat and then that's kind of it. Yeah. But I feel like I heard someone say at the moment, the big artists and bands in the scene at the moment are just placeholder artists. Okay. So Royal Otis was one that came up. Yeah. They're obviously really big at the moment Mm -hmm. and they're, I think they're quite polarizing in that, yeah, they do great covers, but their original music people either think it's great yeah or people go like i just don't get the hype yeah but they're at the size they are because they're just sort of trending yeah but their style of music has been consistent through the australian scene for the probably the best part of 10 years well i I mean like i would say a royal lotus album is not that far removed from like a, a jungle giants album no in 2010 or 2011 yeah um, and I think we're seeing that we're seeing ticket or like festival goers and ticket buyers get fatigued of the repetition of it because festivals are going down the gurgler. Yeah. No one's really buying tickets to shows unless they're diehard fans. Like, yeah, I just think there's no, yeah, there's no new sound coming at the moment. I made, I have a, a little list of ones I think could be, mm. Um, candidates. Yep. So I think, is it the return of rock stuff to pop in the way of like Olivia Rodrigo? She's yep. putting guitars back front and center. It's angsty. It's emo y without being like emo. Yeah. Like it's still pop music, but it's got those flashes of like pop punk, emo, and stuff like that. It, even yep. at some points, flashes of like metal. Never, she's never going full metal. Like she's never, it's, it's she not. She does like little screams. She throws stuff. a little scream in, but the, the guitars are definitely turned right up, the distortions on, that yep. kind of stuff. Is it, and this one's been going for a while, so I think it, this is, if it's going to be representative of, of the sound, it's the early part of the decade, that disco revival that like Dua mm. Lipa had really r- r- ridden the wave on. Yep. Like that real, like straight up, like could have been a, a a BG song kind of sound yeah. like future nostalgia. Is it country? Is it Morgan Wallen? Yeah. Is it's it an interesting Luke one. Combs? It just feels like there's genres that are popular. Yeah. But not globally popular. Yeah. There's no overwhelming trend where you hear an artist and you're like, oh, I really like that song. Yeah. And I could go to a concert and know yeah. a few of their songs. Ed, like I keep coming back to Ed Sheeran, but 
Like I don't like Ed Sheeran. I don't listen to him, but I could go to his show yeah. and probably sing along to 10 or 12 songs. Yeah, fair. Like country is one that is growing and yep. it'll always have, it'll always be big in its own market, but I think it's too, it's a little bit like metal and dance music where it's just a little bit too extreme for like mainstream. the mainstream. Yeah. Because like Morgan Wallen, I love Last Night. Yeah. So does everyone in the world do i know any other songs yeah no yeah edm i like a couple of fred again songs don't really care about the rest of the discography yeah and metal probably is always going to be too extreme to come into the mainstream yeah that's fair but yeah i don't know i've got a couple other thoughts yeah hit me the fact that hip-hop hip-hop in general is falling back i was reading some stats recently that about five ten years ago Hip hop was over fifty percent of all music on the charts. Yep, and now it's down to about thirty. Yeah, because hip hop's not really. It's just, it's not. It's not getting shitter or like anything like that. It's just I think people have hit like saturation point, and then it's going to and back. then it's going to come back down, which yeah. happened with rock and roll over a thirty year period. Yeah, like it did. it's it, it, these things happen in waves. Yeah, um, you know, hip hop's fifty as of this year or last year or whenever. Like, it's. It's it's lived a, a pretty solid life cycle. Mm. Latin pop having a big explosion. Bad Bunny, Carol yeah. G, artists like that are like having a massive, especially in the states, having yeah. a massive surge. Jojo Siwa, Jojo Siwa. <laughs> then the one that I want to put out there, and this isn't a genre so much as, what if it's twenty twenties is just women at the front of pop music? Because yeah, apart, aside from maybe Ed Sheeran, Harry Styles, Drake. At a stretch. Niall Horan. Niall Horan. I mean, but even he's not... I wouldn't say he's oh, he, big. He's probably B list. Maybe C. Yeah. Apart from like maybe four or five artists, most of the big pop stars at the moment are women. It's a good point. So like, is is it just... Is, it's less about genre and more about women mm. as the storytellers, about the singers, about songwriters? I don't know. Well, yeah, because it's... Yeah, it's a good point because when I think of probably the five biggest artists in the world right now, they're all women. Yeah. You've got like Taylor Swift, Dua Lipa... Beyonce. Yeah. You could throw Billie Eilish in there. Yep. You'd throw Scissor in there. Yep. And that's five. I'd throw I'd throw an Olivia Rodrigo in there. Olivia Rodrigo. The only one I could see the only like top tier male artist that I'd throw in there is Post Malone. Yeah, Post Malone. I think Post Malone the weekend maybe. Yeah. Harry Styles and Ed Sheeran and probably Drake, even though I think Drake is kind of fading out of the I feel mainstream like a fair bit. Dropping off a bit. But I think probably at least four out of those five are probably the big male stars. Yeah. And then after that, it's a big gap a between huge drop off. the next big ones. Yeah. Whereas I feel like there's female stars who are just there and all throughout. Yeah. No, I think it's a good point. I think it'll be interesting to see how, I mean, next year's the halfway mark of the decade, which is terrifying. Exactly. But does COVID come into it at all? I mean, it has to because I it changed so. the way that we experienced music and discovered music and yeah. went to or not went to gigs. It's definitely mm. changed it. But And the other thing I think is, I think COVID definitely finally broke like the monoculture. Yeah. Like you, you aren't going to things to talk to your mates about like, check this song out, check this movie out, check yeah. this whatever. And so everyone went into their own little corner and had their own little thing. So I think like there's no like, like there's still massive artists, obviously that are like huge and that a lot of people love. Yeah. But like, there's no aside from maybe Taylor Swift. There's no artist where like everyone is in the cultural moment, mm. and so maybe that's why there's no like sound of the moment. Because but do you think that's in itself the trend? Maybe. Yeah. Because it, I think that's a good point. Because whenever, well, COVID, yeah, isolated everyone. Yeah. And everyone found their own little niche. Yeah. And it seems like there are just these little clusters growing. I mean, running is the perfect example. Yeah. Fucking everyone all of a sudden in Australia. Yeah. Runs. It's one club city. But before COVID, everyone used to get pissed. Yeah. And go out. Like just the general I don't know where I'm going with this, but No, I'm I'm following you. Do you know what I mean? Like It changed it changed our cultural touch points. Yeah, it did. And fuck, I hate running. Yeah. I'm never gonna join a run club. But they've got a little cult and you sort of to pull it back to music. It's full circle here. Well, you've got the blokes, the people that like going out. Yeah. You run clubs. Yeah. Your music goers and your sports goers. Mm. They're all the little niches of the the nightlife yes. of Australia at the moment. Yeah. 
they're just all different genres of music and they don't always have to maybe they don't need to mix and that's fine but it's just boring it it is boring and also i think in 5 years time you know whether or not in 5 years time maybe we still don't have a, a sound of the 2020s mm. but in 5 years time we, i think we're all going to look back and be like what were any of us like what were we doing what were we doing mm. even like if if i look at my playlist now i've never had a more diverse playlist no neither like stuff in there that I like 10 years ago I'd be like why am I listening to this and I'm like now I, I, I like this I like this yeah but it also feels like there's less music coming out because it's very rare there's nothing better than opening your release like your new releases on a Friday and there's just bands on bands on bands yeah. that you've been waiting for the album you've been waiting for the song and you've just got about 10 or 12 new songs that you've been excited about to listen to all out yeah on one day yeah it feels like those days are well gone yeah right and it's an album drops or sometimes two albums from two artists drop on the same day and then it's months yeah. waiting yeah that's and i don't enough. know whether that's the covid thing or bands doing eps and singles more now but possibly the hype has sort of come out of for, the scene a bit see for me like and maybe it's just a different approach or whatever i love like I'm on Apple Music, I get my weekly new music yeah. discovery playlist, and I think for me, I love nothing more than the, the first couple will always be like high and yeah. popular artists because it's like we'll hook you on with something big, yeah. And then so like maybe first two or three, as someone that I'll know probably yeah, have, have someone to. that's on high rotation, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then under that, I love nothing more than going. I know none of these bands because that's twenty twenty five opportunities yeah. to to find my new favorite song. Yeah, so and Spotify do two versions of that. Yeah, right. Well, it, you've got the Discover too Weekly. Many versions. Too many versions. Well, there's Discover Weekly every Monday yeah. where they do a whole playlist based on your liked songs. Yeah. But then no, there's not really any artists that you've saved or listened to before. So mm-hmm. they're all new based on the algorithms of your yeah. playlist. And then you've got your release radar on Fridays, which is just full of... The shit you like. The shit you like, tailored to you. Yeah. Or bands that you've never heard of. Yeah. That are just within the genres. But yeah. fuck, it's hit and miss sometimes. It is. And look, I, but that's the fun of it. That is the fun of it. But I think, yeah, I'm, I just don't know what the general vibe is. Well, I'll put it to you. Put it to, put it to me, Sam. Who are you excited? Like, who is a band or artist that you are excited about that you think in the next three to five years everyone will be going fuck they are huge when we say huge are we talking like like world conquering huge like not world conquering Dua Lipa Taylor Swift huge are we talking like no I'm not like not selling out arenas okay but just in their niche or they've got a little bit of crossover into other genres like just huge in their own right I, I think it's more just like who are you excited about I think I think Coming up. Fred again is about to, to crack into the mainstream. And I think riding on his coattails, or that's not even the right word. That makes it sound like demeaning. But in that same mm. pod of artists, Dom Dollar. Because yeah. I think he's a, I think I actually think the music he produces is better than Fred again in the sense that it's, it's more accessible. It's slightly poppier. It's dancier. I find it a lot catchier. It's a lot catchier. And it's not as repetitive. And like, if, you're, if your mum said hey Samuel what are you listening to and you gave her a, a, Samuel earpod. yeah Samuel she, you gave her an earpod and it was Fred again or earpod you, or you gave her an earpod, earpod. Samuel are yeah. you having a stroke Samuel what are you listening to you give her the earpod and it's, it's an Fred AirPod. again no it's just I didn't want to we brand it not sponsored by that I didn't want to brand it it's just although if they'd like to <laughs> our fee is enormous it's more than they can afford but <laughs> you give her one earpod and it's Fred again yeah. or you give her an earpod and it's Dom Dollar your mum's going, I may not like it, but Dom Doll is the one that I like want to listen to. Yeah. Like and I think that's how you gotta judge pop music sometimes. It's like what's like what does like the average Joe mm. Blog on the street who knows nothing about music yeah. want to listen to? They still listen to Fred again because oh, I've heard of him. My friends went to his show. <laughs> you know, fuck. That's they're the ones you gotta avoid. That's true. That is if, true. If someone's given the choice of Dom Dollar and Fred again, yeah, and they choose Fred again, fucking run for the hills. Well, either they are like the most committed, like electronic, like super fan. Because like I get it from a, like a 
a deep cut electronic sense. I yeah. think he's. I think Fred Higgins probably a better producer. I think he's technically a better DJ. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that Dom Dollar is making more accessible music. Yeah. Like music at a party, and don't be wrong. I've I'll, I'll put on some Fred Higgins at a party. Don't be wrong. But at a party, you got yeah. one song left. You're like, oh, you're probably going Dom Dollar. The drops are bigger. Bit of San Fran disco. Mm. Fuck, you know what? No one's having a bad time with that. But yeah, Freddie Gibbs drops. They like they build and build, and then there's no real moment where you're like, yeah. off chops, cutting shapes. Yeah, they're just like, oh yeah, it's Freddie Gibbs music is ecstasy music. Yeah, you know where you just like you're on the high, mm. and it's always on the high. I think coming up after them as well is Chasing Status. They've been around for I was fucking coming up ages, having been on a roller coaster. They've been on a roller coaster, but if Dom Dollar and Freddie are going to pop it off. Yeah. I think Chase and Status will come up as well. Yeah. Even though they, I, I know they've been around for a long time, but Butter Done, like, yeah. that was everywhere. And I think if they do another song like that, it'll yeah. just take it. I, I think that the, I think that the song, look, projecting forward in five years' mm. time, and we're looking back and we're asking the same question, I think the song of the back half of the 20, the sound of the back half of the 2020s is going to be very intense EDM, like drum and bass, jungle. Yeah. Deep house, almost trance kind of stuff. Like I think we're going in that direction where it's going to be the the kind of music that kind of touched the mainstream in the nineties, yeah. but then kind of never quite made it. I think we're going all in. Yeah, I do too. But I still don't think it'll make the full mainstream. I think it might because I think I think we're in that phase now where they're they're it's just outside of mainstream with the most intense sounds. Then mm. in I reckon three to four years time, pop artists who have been rubbing shoulders with this kind of sound will take that sound put a nice lyrical yeah. melody to it and then that'll become the mainstream but then that means like bands like chase atlantic who have been doing that for a fair while that moved to america because australia doesn't get it yeah they're going to become the fucking biggest thing that's ever. what i mean yeah i mean i i would say in three to five years expect a fred again featuring maybe not exactly Dua Lipa, but an artist of yeah. that caliber like you know what i mean like a dom dollar featuring a, a, an Olivia Rodrigo well, he, Dom Dollar did one with Nelly Furtado didn't he well yeah that's what I mean like yeah. like the, 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 the pop vocal person yeah. with the, the heavy EDM producer yeah. that sits together and that'll be the biggest song of the year guaranteed yeah mine's a little bit more niche but in the extreme world yeah. I think Knocked Loose will be the biggest thing yeah in alternative or heavy in a year's time yeah they're very extreme but I think People, like you said with EDM, people are, I guess... People looking for the extreme. They're gravitating to extreme. Well, they've been in the safe little like bubble yeah. zone and they're like, okay, we've had enough of this. What's something wild? And something that gives me, like as selfish as it is, and it's just the way people think, like, what's something interesting that yeah. like, what's something different that no one would expect me to listen to? Yeah, but I mean, think of the last time that like heavy metal and like big EDM was... The, it was the 90s. It would just come off the back of like really manufactured 80s bubblegum pop. Yeah. And they went like, no, fuck it. We want Nirvana. We want through new metal. We want the Pearl original Jam pop. Yeah, exactly. Limp Biscuit and stuff. But it's like, Knocked Loose, they are as extreme and heavy. Like they are the most angry sounding bands you can listen to. But there's something about them that is just like, that hooks you. Yeah. And it, their breakdowns literally sound like glass breaking, <laughs> which is a weird thing to say that people like, but they played Coachella. Yeah. Like an extreme metal band with a singer that sounds like a 10 year old girl screaming. Yeah. Played Coachella. Like, I just think it's a sign of what's to come. I and can't, that, I can't wait for scissor into. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, they played the same bill. As Fred again, Skrillex and... Qu- well, uh, Quartet? No. Well, Frank Forte. Ocean. Fuck me. Yeah. Uh, Forte, yeah. Yeah. Fuck. And Frank Ocean, but you know, they... But I just think, yeah. So there we go. Dom Dollar, Fred again, Knocked Loose. Yeah. The big three. The Holy Trinity. If you <laughs> Holy Trinity. Fred again, just sampling Counting Worms by Knocked Loose. You know what? Wouldn't hate it. No. But I just think in those two extreme worlds, and for anyone that doesn't think those two genres are related... They're all like, there's no correlation between electronic music and metal. Yeah. They are the closest correlation. It's the same thing. One's just got guitars and one's got fucking yeah. synth. There synth. is no two genres that have like identical parallels more than 
electronic music. That's so embarrassing. I forgot to mute my... <laughs> <laughs> then electronic music and metal. Even to the point where... Think about what people wear to those concerts. It's Both the of them, shit. it's fucking stringlets with like the buffest dudes you've ever seen. Yeah. Fucking snapback caps. It's just... The shorter shorts. <laughs> In one genre, most of them are virgins. <laughs> In the other genre, most of them have just taken cat. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the metal <laughs> crowd is actually probably 10 times safer. <laughs> probably. Mm. Don't get in the pit. Yeah, it depends how in the pit you are. The, I would say, I mean, that was a pretty serious. That was in depth. That was an in-depth, serious musical discussion. I liked it. We've we don't a, do that very often. We know. Some, every so often, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll do the best the best things on the Shrek soundtrack. Best things on the Shrek soundtrack. Then we'll do... The, the future of music, you know? Mm. Really shows that we're educated. <laughs> that is going to be impossible to cut down into yeah, a social good spec. Fucking luck. I can't wait for that. Um, well, I suppose we should throw over to. Uh, we got had dark hours on the show. Dark hours. I don't know about. I wasn't in this chat. You I wasn't in this involved. Chat. No, but it was with a Sam. Um, That's good. Sam from Dark Hours. Um, the. So, weirdly enough, it doesn't happen often. Dark Hours have not dropped any material at all. So we are catching them prior to their debut. They could be the next big thing. They could be the next big thing. Dua and Lipa. that does come up, trust me. Do a leap of Dark Hours. Um, think, so it's it's members of the bands Breakaway, um, Sound of Seasons, and Yours Truly. Yours Truly. Sounds of Season, Sound of Seasons is Marcus Bridges' old band, isn't it? Yes, that's correct, from Northline. Northline. And uh, it's it, they all, each of their individual projects before they came together were all kind of in that spectrum between like, pop punk and like kind of emo punk yeah and then they've gone come together and gone let's do something heavy mm. and it's pretty sick um their, their first their first single is it's it makes a statement straight away like it doesn't fuck around it's called eye of the storm but um let's throw it to me and not you want me you, to sam. throw to you yeah you throw to me and <laughs> sam that'd be great hang on I'll, i'm catching <laughs> not in the studio <laughs> <laughs> we'll blur it well, joining us on the show ahead of their debut uh, track is Sam from uh, the Sydney band Dark Hours. Welcome to the show, Sam. How are you doing? Thanks, man. I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's uh, like before we dive in, it's 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 not often that we we get a band before their debut, so it's I'm I'm, very, I'm a bit excited to sort of to see where the conversation can lead us to sort of see how you know the, the inner workings of something before it, a project before it launches. So. You mean like in terms of if it goes well or tanks completely? <laughs> I mean, if if you want to frame it that way, but I meant just in terms of even you know like getting getting a frame of mind just before something like this launches. You know, often we're, we're chatting to bands who either you know are a couple tracks in, maybe they've got an EP or something dropping, um, and we and they there's there's a lot of there's a bit of retrospect on on a few things, but to go in entirely clean is. Like it's all, it's all promise. It's all potential. I'm very excited to, to see where it leads. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, I guess from, from our standpoint, it's pretty nerve wracking right now because I guess for all of us, it's not like we're starting completely fresh. Like we're, we're not new to the scene. We've all been in past projects and stuff. So I guess that carries a certain amount of expectation on how it's going to go as well. <laughs> <laughs> so we're trying to, we're trying to manage that. I'm sure it's very nerve wracking, but it's so exciting. Like anything, anything could happen here. This could be, you know, in, in a couple, couple of weeks time, we could be sitting back down to talk about, you know, the biggest, the biggest song that's just launched and, and taken over the scene. Who knows? I mean, it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it is. And it's, it, you know, for, for most of us, it's been, I know really since pre COVID that we've done anything musically. So I think, that's really going to be the best feeling when it comes out is to just be like, all right, we're active again. We're actually doing things, not hiding away in the studio, getting shit done. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. The look, let's, let's dive in. Um, first question is the same question we run every week. Uh, what have you been listening to? What's been spinning in your playlists on Spotify or whatever you're using? Man, I'm so interested to know if you've had anyone with such a mixture of, of stuff going on mainly because <laughs> mainly because i have a son that's almost two years old <laughs> so, so legit right now the last song played was baby shark by pink fong <laughs> at least it's not the coco melon version i would uh, i'd be kicking you off the podcast if that's happening <laughs> oh no because coco melon's number five <laughs> 
it, it literally goes like pink fong, architects, blippy, <laughs> bad omens, coco melon. <laughs> like that's that's legit what's going on in my household right now. Maybe, you know, we've had a few festival cancellations across Australia. Splendor ended, Griffin the Moo ended. Maybe we're not hitting the right audiences. Maybe it needs to be like, you know, a combo, a combo of like <laughs> some of the biggest acts on earth and then just throw a blippy in there. And he can be like running around the, the playground, the, you know, the playground that is Splendor being like, oh, I'm next to a band. Or <laughs> I can bring out the dead-eyed Coco Melon animated children on stage or something <laughs> like that. I think I can see it going really, really well. I can see the... Obviously, you're familiar with Blippi, so I, uh, I unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, I, I can see like for those of you who don't know who Blippi is, he kind of walks as if he's break dancing the entire time, <laughs> and I, I can see that going down really well here in Australia. <laughs> no, no one will make fun of him. This the um <laughs> with these weird orange and blue fucking clothes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For how simple it is, it does it prints money. It's all one take, most of it. Like, maybe I'll come back on in a couple of months to launch my new child's TV show. Yeah. Dark Hours and Blippi the collab. I can see yeah, that going oh, really well. Damn. <laughs> Look, as, as I mentioned before, you know, you guys do have your, your debut track, Eye of the Storm, coming up. And I suppose before we get stuck too much into the track, I want to talk about the band, how you guys came together. Uh, you know, you kind of mentioned, you kind of gave us a bit of a hint at the top there that it, this isn't any one of the band's first rodeo. You're all kind of, uh, you know, a mix and match from a few different outfits across the Sydney scene. Do you want to kind of give us a bit of a a, a how and why you guys came together as uh, as Dark Hours? Yeah, I mean, really the whole thing... I mean, do do like I came from a band called Breakaway, which is probably more on the emo rock kind of kind of genre. Um, I've always had like an aggressive tone to my voice. Um, the whole idea of starting the band was that actually came from our bass player Jason, who used to be in Sound of Seasons with Marcus from North Lane. Um, after that ended, um, he sort of started asking me, "Hey, do you want to do something heavy?" Um, <laughs> Funnily enough, at the time, I wasn't really into heavy music. So I was like, oh, well, let's talk when we get the chance, man. <laughs> um, at, the, at the same time, I had um, Kane, who comes from like a pop punk band um, called Forever and Tear that he plays in with his brother, who's always been like obsessed with Parkway Drive and any heavy band possible. Um, so we never really had the chance to drum in a band that was like the genre that he was passionate about. Um, so I had both of them in my ear. Um, and then I guess sort of when COVID hit, you know, we stopped doing the breakaway thing and I was like, all right, fine. I'll listen to some heavy music. Like <laughs> g- g- give me, give me some songs. And then um, like, I was familiar with like bring me the horizon, right? That was probably as far as I, as far as I dabbled. And then, they sent me through, um, what was it? Animals by Architects, I think. And I was like, oh, you can do it like that? Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. That that makes sense to me. Um, funnily enough, after that, I got a whole lot heavier. And um, yeah, and then it was really just the three of us for probably, I don't know, the first six, seven months. Um and then I sort of got wind that Lockie had left yours truly. Um, he was chilling out for a bit, didn't really want to play music at the time. Um, and then we ran into each other at a at a show, got talking, and yeah, he was. I, I honestly asked him, expecting a flat out like, "Nah, dude, I'm done." <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, dude, call me." So it's meant to be in that case. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, look, it's it's a really good group of guys. Um, everyone's really on the same page, which in a band is really hard to achieve. Um, and everyone's sort of got the same goals and visions and on the same page creatively. So it's actually been probably the easiest writing and recording process I've ever been a part of, which is... Yeah. Which is great because I get really stressed. (laughs) (laughs) 
That's fair enough. Then I mean, it, the easier the better, I guess. Uh, I mean, as you kind of were hinting at there as well, that like that's a, a real spread. That, you know, the bands that everyone has come from over over time is a real spread of styles and genres. I mean, obviously you all kind of sit within that heavy, you know, pop pop punk to metal, you know, spectrum. Oh yeah. What what kind of? I mean, obviously apart from just this shared love or passion for, for heavy music, what kind of you, did you bond musically over when you was, you know, probably first having a couple of jams just to see how you fit together? Um, I th- around the whole architects, I prevail type type stuff. Um, definitely the, the latest bad omens record was like a really big one for everyone. Um, unfortunately not blippy. I did try. Um, it's, it's, it's let's never say never is all i'm saying <laughs> it's an acquired taste the more you listen the more you're willing to put up with it <laughs> i think there's a really good uh you know metal baby shark cover to be had um somewhere in there <laughs> you know what someone actually brought that up to me last week they're like you're gonna do it right i was like do what <laughs> like, baby shark heavy <laughs> One of my, one of my, I mean, this is probably going off topic a bit, but one of my favorite uh, walkout tracks was uh, the band Group Love. Um, they used to come out to Wild for the Night by ASAP Rocky, which is yeah. like an awesome song, but way different style to, to Group Love. And um, it, the drummer would just come out first, sit down quietly behind the kit and just fucking start absolutely smashing, going hectic, like just putting these awesome double kicks onto this, you know, wicked kind of dubstep rap track. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking a similar vibe. Maybe you just come out one by one and just add a little something to to to, to the basis that is Baby yeah. Shark. I can see it now. I can see it working. Do I have to, in terms of like coming out to a certain song, I, I have to just go back to the past for a second. And the Breakaway did the Taking Back Sunday and the used co-headliner. <laughs> and, and on that tour, we made a really stupid decision of letting our sound guy, Adam, choose our walk-on music. <laughs> First night, all good. It's a good bit of music. Got us on, everything. Well, we arrive in Melbourne, and do you remember Taylor Swift's um, uh, Trouble, the yes. goat version? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and that's what we walked out to. I mean, that if that, that gets the people going. There's no, there's no denying it. The people would have been fucking hyped. <laughs> well, they were for that song. <laughs> What happened afterwards? I don't know. <laughs> That's when you, you got to open the circle pit to the to the goat song. Get it, get it going. <laughs> um, look, let's let's talk about the David track, Eye of the Storm. You know, it's making a statement out of the gate. Um, it doesn't fuck around. Let's be honest. You know, it starts with these thick guitars. It starts with a really bouncy as fuck bassline, a breakbeat almost kind of sound on the drums. Um, I suppose. Aside from wanting to set the tone early and, and, and give uh, listeners a, a real sort of snapshot of what Dark Hours is going to be, why this track? What was what was the track that th- what, what was behind this track that you thought this is the one that's going to sort of kick us off? Um, I think we sort of we listened back to. I think right now we have about six six songs down, um, and some of them start with vocals. Some like we really wanted a riff to kick it all in. We wanted people to hear the first 10 seconds and know exactly the vibe that they were expecting to hear after that. Um, yeah. Whereas I feel like sometimes when you start, especially on like a soft vocal, you, you don't really know what genre it's going to lead into. Um, I just think it, it gives more of an impact. It's more in people's face. Um, and I, I I don't know. I get enjoyment out of, <laughs> out, of, out of that, you know, <laughs> the opening riff without the drums and then suddenly it smashes through your speakers. I think that's great. That's that's how I like to listen to music. Yeah, when everything lands in that first, after that first kind of those few seconds of guitar, it lands heavy. Like it doesn't, there's no like gradual, you know, welcome to the show. It's just like, here we are. Here's what's fucking happening. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it also like it shows because of where all four of us have come from, it shows instantly, hey, we're doing something different to what we previously were. Yeah. And 100%. that w- that was also really, really important to us. I suppose that is a, a pretty big um, consideration for you guys. Obviously, you'll be drawing in from fan groups that you guys have had over, over time with different projects, different bands. 
you know what if there's one takeaway that you want uh you know a breakaway fan or a yours truly fan or, or any of any music fan really to take away from from dark hours what what's the kind of like mission statement that you kind of you want to like lay out with uh with the track um i mean honestly the brief in my head was epic heavy <laughs> Like, I think it ticks that box. Yeah, like let let's get the most energetic riff we can with the biggest sounding chorus that we can. That was that was the goal. Um, I had I'd never really screamed properly before, so that it, like the bridge of the song is really like me learning to scream. Um, so I didn't want to have it too much throughout the entire song in case everyone hates my scream let's just give them a little <laughs> test and see how we go <laughs> but yeah epic heavy was really what we were going for yeah and look you've led me nicely into my next question because i want to take a moment to talk about that that breakdown and then that solo that go kind of back to back with each other the solo it's sounding like something between like tom morello's tremolo like in in any number of fucking Rage Against the Machine songs, maybe some Limp Biscuit scratching in there from from DJ Lethal or something. Like, what when you were kind of sitting down to work out the textures and the sounds that you were going to put into this? What what led you to those sort of conclusions? Because it's just, I mean, it's 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 a combination of things that I'm familiar with, but things that I was like, wow, I didn't see that coming uh, within the track. Yeah, so the the bridge is interesting. So when it comes to writing, I'm pretty I'm pretty lazy before we go into the studio, like. I, I try to get my verses and my chorus there and then sort of feel it out as the production comes together in like its final form to see, okay, where are we going to take this bridge? What What's going to happen? Um, so when we were kind of stands back to when we were looking at who we wanted to produce the record as well. Um, we've, we've all worked with various producers, a lot in common. We kind of wanted to work with someone who none of us had worked with before. Um, Craig Wilkinson, who's from a band called Red Hook. Um, he's been a really close friend of mine for, for a long time now. And um, I sort of followed his production as he was learning and as he started to get better. And then just literally as we were having the conversation, like, oh, who are we going to work with? He sent me a Red Hook song that he had produced. He's like, dude, I did it. <laughs> like they've let me have one here we go <laughs> they um, let me in they let me behind the desk yeah but i mean like he's so creative as a musician and prolific like in insanely um and i really like his sound choices um and i also really like that for him there's literally no boundaries he may throw some weird shit in there sometimes and you're like oh maybe we bring it back a little but he's willing to go like literally anywhere. So having someone like him in the room and overlooking it and just being like, just do what feels most naturally to you guys. In terms of guitars and that solo is like him and Lockie just talking about like, let's what doesn't matter what the part is. Let's just do exactly what is going to feel good for us. Yep. Yep. And I don't know what fucking planet they were on, but that's what they came up with. <laughs> it, like when I first sort of sat down and listened to the track, I was like, is it a guitar? Like, you know, it's so, it's so non guitar that I was like, it could be a synth. Someone could have just it's like really fucked around with, with some, some pro tool settings on a synth and, and, and done it on like a mini keyboard. But it, after a couple of listens, I was like, nah, it has to be a guitar. It's there's, it's... there's definitely a guitar in there. Um, <laughs> there. There's definitely some subtle hints of Craig in the background there with his production. Um, but uh, no, I, I remember watching Lockie do, the, well, not only that song, but all the songs and was sort of like, well, the first thing I said to him after he finished track, and was like, hey, man, don't ever break your fucking hands because trying to find someone else who's going to be able to play some of these parts, you've really fucked us. <laughs> Insuring the hands for millions of dollars, just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we, we, we haven't succeeded or tanked yet, so we'll see. Maybe this is the time to do it. And then, in, you know, if you do tank, just get into punch a wall and be like, well, we insured him. <laughs> well, gee, I got some thinking to do. <laughs> Or there's always another way. The um, I mean, you mentioned you got you got six ish tracks in the can ready to roll. 
can you give us a little a little teaser, a little moose bouche of, of some of the what what else we can expect on some of those other tracks? Oh man, um, a lot of variety. Um, not yeah, I don't think there's a single song on there that is sort of down the same route. Um, we have things that are, I guess a bit more mellow verses with huge choruses. That's sort of a thing that I've always sort of tried to do. That's just a personal taste of mine. Um, Craig kind of pushed me to go outside of the boundaries of like, yeah, that's where you're comfortable, but what's the type of song that you've always wanted to make that you've never had the opportunity to, because it just wouldn't suit breakaway. Like, what, what are you going to do? Um, and the concept that I came up with was like, what if Chester Bennington sung like a knock loose type song? <laughs> sick, <laughs> sick. And so, yeah, there's like a, there's a very different song on there called Brain Freeze that I'm like, that's the one that I'm so excited to release. <laughs> I like, um, Is there some barking? If we go on lock, knock loose, are we barking in it? <laughs> <laughs> there there is no barking oh there were, you there, first, were, <laughs> <laughs> there, there were various conversations around should there be barking should there not <laughs> they're the important conversations of our time let's be honest yeah yeah exactly but in the end we decided hey let's let them do them <laughs> <laughs> there's some pretty pretty intense meowing but that's separate that's a different thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, well, I think, you know, he, he he's probably more like, you know, a Labrador, like a, a bigger breed of dog. I, I, I probably sound more like a convertible. <laughs> Something that's like uh, yippy at the park, you know. It's, it's Something it's, that's not threatening. <laughs> but bringing it to the stage, I like that. G- given the yeah. energy. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, uh, are there any plans to bring uh, Dark Hours to a live stage, uh, you know, in, in the near future? Yeah, look, a- Absolutely um there is some stuff that we're working on um behind the scenes probably maybe later this year um we are looking into it um probably more likely next year um we kind of we we want to get i guess we've we've sort of got to the stage where we're we're almost at the six song marks that's your first ep we really want to go hard with the writing and, and try and get to the point where like we can release a record almost straight after that. Um, which then also makes touring a lot easier because once you start, you don't have to take a big break to, <laughs> to go ride again, you know? Yeah. hundred um, percent. I think also one of my, like, I really like what we've done with these six songs. And, and one of my biggest fears post being in breakaway was the gap of time in between writing and recording and it can change your mindset and it can change what type of songs you write and how you approach it. And like, I, I currently fear that I like, I really like what we're doing. So I want to just keep going with it as far as I can until I guess I probably burn out. Um, and (laughs) then go do the touring side of thing more often anyway. I mean, we, we, we definitely want to play live like asap if, yeah you know if the dream scenario came up in a week we'd, we'd be jumping on it in two seconds um but we're really taking our time to get this project right as opposed to just doing things as quickly as possible yeah 100 percent. and it's it's you know there's the there's the old saying of you have your whole life to write your first album and then your second one is is done in a couple of weeks i suppose when it comes to a, a new project it's like that kind of times a million where you've you've put what you felt like we probably felt like was a lot of your creativity that into into breakaway and then to come back for a second project you're sitting down planning it out more having been on that ride a couple of times figuring out what you want to do and where it wants to go absolutely i think there's like a, a maturity thing as well like when i guess when you first start your first band you're like yeah we're just gonna get stuff out we gotta go play shows we gotta do this we gotta do that you don't really think about is what we're doing the right thing? Are we where we need to be to actually start growing a fan base? Are we, you know, whereas now we, we've all done all that sort of stuff before. So now we know, Hey, if we need to re- delay the release by two months, 
let's delay that. Let's take our time. Let's get it right because, you know, a year from now, we're not going to give a shit whether we release something in March or if we released it in May. Um, it's going to be how did that release go? How did it sound? Yeah. What what did we, you know, what, what were we able to achieve? You get one chance to make a first impression, make it a good one. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's it. Epic heavy smack bang in your face. <laughs> Um, broadening it out a little bit, I suppose, Sam and I, uh, co-host Sam, not yourself, yep. Uh, yep. have been discussing recently, uh, you know, the kind of heavy, heavy genres are back, you know, bubbling under the surface of the mainstream a little bit and, and, and sounds, instruments, production techniques are kind of filtering through in a, in a lot of artists who are taking stuff mainstream. So I suppose, you know, more than probably in the last, any time in the last decade or 15 years, heavy music's back to to being kind of adjacent to the mainstream how do you think a, a city like sydney which you know like brisbane has had always been a, a good um breeding ground for heavy bands how do you think the scene down there is ready for for that resurgence do you think it's it's kind of prepared to be thrust back into the spotlight absolutely um it's it's fine i guess like when when those genres are really big you could almost talk to anyone and they'd know this heavy band or they'd know that heavy band. And then maybe, maybe the scene dies down for a little while, but the more that I, I guess being a dad, I have a lot of friends now who know nothing about music. Right. But I can start, you know, being like, Oh, have you heard of bad omens? Have you heard of architects? Have you heard of bring me the horizon? And people who literally do not listen to music or heavy music, like, Oh, I actually, know them so you can kind of you can kind of see it filtering into the to the mainstream whether you know mainstream radio or whatever is actually picking it up the word of mouth thing which i think is something that's always been strong in any rock genre which is why it's always been so touring you know grassroots based um i think i'm definitely starting to notice a lot of that and i think part of it also comes down to like where we are economically people are angry man <laughs> <laughs> like you know it's the same when green day released um american idiot the album blew up because of the political situation at the time like heavy music or rock music in general is something that people like live and breathe it's not something that they just listen to in their car because it sounds good in the background Absolutely. I think, you know, shit times do make good music as, as much as we hate to say. A hundred percent. Um, you, you know, you guys, excuse me, you guys had, uh, had hot damn. We had snitch and thriller, uh, club nights that were, you know, a real, again, that kind of, you know, pl- place to prove yourself as, a, as an up and coming band. I was going to say iconic sticky floors. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just, bad times but in the best way kind of places yeah 100 uh, <laughs> i suppose you know do, is there that as you were saying that kind of that grassroots infrastructure where there's the spaces for bands to play that kind of are gonna reach uh the same kind of scene that you know i i think up here in brizzy you know snitch and thrill have gone away and there's a couple of venues who are keeping the the the, the torch burning but Largely, I think it, it would you would be struggling to find a you know alternative like go to place where that you're going to get that same scene rebuilt. How does it feel down in there? Yeah, I'd say it's pretty it's pretty similar. Um, whether we kind of cross over into this or not, but we do have AM PM, um, so like emo nights. Um, but apart from that, man, there's there's not a lot. I know um, I'm trying to think what they've recalled the bald face stag. Oh, the crowy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because a Brizzy like, export. We gave that to you. I'm yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, you did. I, I, I actually played the crowy in Brisbane, like on our very first tour, like ten years ago. Um, yeah. So like, there's there's venues like that still around, but there's, you know, you're automatically jumping up to that like three three fifty capacity. There's none of these, a hundred to you know, a hundred and twenty kid tight little rooms anymore so really and i think that's maybe one of the reasons why a lot of people are releasing quite a bit of music before they play shows to try and like 
build up enough people so that those rooms don't look completely empty on your first round. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think that's also something that's terrifying about starting again. Because, like, when you're... <laughs> <laughs> like, playing the big shows is actually so much easier than playing the small shows where there's not many people there and everyone's looking at you directly in the eye. Yeah, like, and I you're looking at them directly in the eye. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah, 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 fully. I find that... I always found that way more scary than, like, going out at the roundhouse or in more or wherever it is like i guess at that point like with the big crowds you can literally say anything and people just go nuts right yeah or if you say anything in a small room and someone's like what do you say <laughs> come say it to my face i'm yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly or wonder wall yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely um bit of a bit of a change of pace word on the street is that uh you're a bit of a fan of dinosaurs sam and uh oh. I wanted to know: Will the uh, will the T Rex be making it off uh, off the ink, and maybe you know a T Rex suit when you hit the live stage for the first time? You know what? If it was just up to me, I could see that happening. <laughs> I can see Jason turning to me and going, "Oh, you're so embarrassing." <laughs> <laughs> um, but I am scheduled to get some more dinosaur tattoos, though. So that is that is a thing. Look, I, I think that's a good sticking to it and forcing the band into it could be a good way to go. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> like you know, the the one thing that I do, you know, have the majority of the input in in terms of like I I write it and they can kind of like make comments and critique is the lyrics. Now, if I can get prehistoric in there. <laughs> I think we can go further than that. I think we can get some, you know, some Jurassic, Triassic, Cretaceous, Mesoeric, all those. We're getting deep into it, I think. Man, you're, ta- you're talking to someone who's not going to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, well, I mean, look, The Hives, uh, one of the best albums, Tyrannosaurus Hives, I think is a good That's true. A good starting ground, a good jumping a platform. If you need to bring it to the band, be like, look, we're, we're following in good footsteps here. Dude I, dude, I completely forgot about that band, but they are <laughs> so good live. Fuck yeah. Like, unbelievably good live. They Not um, a band that any of my friends would ever think that I ever listened to, but <laughs> fuck me, they were good. One of those, I think there was a meme going on on TikTok recently that was like, you had the Strokes, and then you had the <laughs> Swedish Strokes, which were the Hives, and then you had the Australian yeah. Strokes, who were the Vines. Like, they all just kind of <laughs> rolled out as the same model, which... And they all fucking rule. <laughs> yeah. Look, yeah. Uh, I suppose, final question, uh, you know, you, you kind of, you touched on it a couple of times. It, it's a big learning curve for you uh, as a vocalist um, to, to, to make the step from where you were in Breakaway to where you are in, in Dark Hours. I suppose, what what do you think is uh, being the biggest learning curve for, for you collectively as a band, um, you know, it, is there a lot of voices in the room when you're you're doing these productions because you've all it's okay, you're all kind of vet, veterans of the scene? What's the what's the is it is it a democratic process? I suppose it's probably the, is the simple question. Um, every, everyone kind of has been really good at giving each other space to breathe and and do what they think is going to be the right thing for their instrument or their or their part. Um, I guess if anything sort of, you know, sounds completely fucked, we're not going to be like, yeah, dude, great job. We're like, (laughs) yeah, let's keep that one. Um, (laughs) I think Craig also does a really good job in terms of managing everyone's emotions in the room and, and how we go about things. Um, he's got, he's got a really great mannerism on, on how he talks to people. You know, he's, he's very encouraging he he also offers a completely different perspective to what you'd be thinking in that moment, which kind of makes you think differently as well. Um, I mean, yeah, Craig Craig may well be the reason why it's been <laughs> such a such a smooth process. <laughs> he's he's kept he's kept the band together. He's the fifth Beatle. Yeah, he, he's a hundred percent like the the 
the fifth guy like uh, i i speak to him like daily it's it's it'd be weird if i didn't speak to craig on a day just just about life <laughs> <laughs> just to ponder the the, the universe <laughs> yeah there's there's not much that i do without running it by craig to see <laughs> to see his perspective <laughs> Well, look, Fire of the Storm is the debut single from Dark Hours, which is dropping on May 3rd. So, listeners, get ready to tune in wherever you get your music. Follow the band uh, in case they that, that dream gig does come up next week and they're uh, on stage. But um, otherwise, just keep an eye out for when those dates get announced. Sam, uh, thank you so much for, for taking the time and having a chat with us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been a bunch of fun, man. Port of all the things you crack over a nice bottle of. I was just thinking vinyl club. It's the it's the finer side of life. Here's a fun, but port maybe a, a nice bottle of Shiraz. Not like a yeah. Shiraz feels a bit more like mm. like pop your best boat shoes on, <laughs> jump into that booth and listen to the notes between the notes. It's vinyl club. Get into the groove. Brought to you by Channel News. They're often racing down the straight. <laughs> That was a news that was reporter. a news reporter at Doing the races. A race. Yeah, you don't hear that often. Do but you? not only a race, a street race, but horse a horse street race. And they're often racing down the Flemington F1. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Like you know, in the same way that like Fast and Furious street races, it is out. Yeah, there. someone's just pulling up at the horse, like at the, <laughs> the horse on the horse on the, at the next lights, to Vin Diesel, and then yeah, Vin Diesel like cracks the rev, and he just hits it like a bit of, and then, <laughs> they're off like quarter miles, and then the, away they go, fucking. Yeah. <laughs> and here comes Fall up, up against the Vin Diesel. He's going fast. He's going left the clappers. Changing gear on the horse. <laughs> well, that's illegal. Wrapping around, grabbing yeah, a Yeah, I was going to yeah, say, yeah. that's frowned upon. Well, what makes make him run faster? Well, certainly not whipping, is it, John? No, no. Saving up to the cup, Sam. Yeah, I'm, I just don't get it. I don't understand. They've been huge on it. I just don't understand. All right, this is one of the things I don't understand 
as a male in my 20s in Australia. Yeah. Blokes who punt on horses. Yeah. I just don't understand. I get it, really. You can't know the form of mm. all these horses. Mm. You can't tell me, oh, horse seven at fucking the Cairns, the Cairns International. Mm. Yeah. Like, you don't know, mate. Down in Orange, oh, horse four. It's a heavy uh, track today, Sam. Heavy track. Oh, he's only a young, young lean. He's won his it? first four. He's a, he's a two year old, and he's 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 you know he's he's good on the run. He's good on the home straight. I just think they're people that have no hobbies. Aren't we worried about depth here? <laughs> I'm out of my depth. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I just feel like they're people with no hobbies. I just it's like I mean, people who do triathlons. They're not good at three sports, so they combine them all and do one. <laughs> Fair enough. That's pretty savage. I couldn't run a triathlon. I couldn't do any of them. I could probably ride a triathlon I, mm, if it's not timed. I don't forget the ride is like 120 kilometers, isn't it? That's a thing at Iron Man. Oh yeah, right. Do they ride in an Iron Man? Uh, he was in a suit for most of it, but I was always coordinated with a ball, so I was pretty good at ball sports rather yeah. than sports that required zero coordination. You've always been quite a good tennis player. Tennis, uh, I can kick a footy. Kicks a footy. Can't play footy very well. Well, you know. But, you know, that's why I played reserves. <laughs> that's why you, you filmed it. Filmed it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Vinyl Club, hey? We're a fair way in Vinyl Club. We have not talked music in any form. Well, we talked a lot about music on the top of the show. That's true, And we're yeah. coming off the Dark Hours chat, which is probably a little bit heavy on your end, I will say. It was, I mean, we, we did You're a bit of have scene. fun. We got a bit, into a scene, bit of scene chat in Sydney. As scene I'm, chat? I'm, I'm sure you just heard. I did. Um, but Actually, uh, I've got a question for you. Please. Besides editing our podcast, what do I do? Do you listen <laughs> to the podcast? Yeah, I do. Do you actually? Yeah, mostly because I always, I always make sure we don't get cancelled. Well, that more in the sense that, like, when I do the edits, I do because I do a version of the pod. This is a bit of behind the scenes. <laughs> I do, behind the I curtain. do a version of the podcast for the podcast feed, and I do a version that I then put onto the video for yeah. YouTube, and they're different versions, and. Like some I'll have like if it's a better visual gag or whatever I'll cut it out of the podcast version believe in the visual or vice versa mm. and so then I have to go I want to go back and listen to the podcast and make sure I put the right edits in because uh, there so have been times I've been like oh, I missed an edit and I have to go back and like remove the audio and then like redeploy it and um, so yeah redeploy so I, I, I the, like as soon as it goes up on podcast I'll listen to it and I'll put it on two times speed so I can get the whole thing really fast oh yeah so you're our first listener every week. Ever, if someone's beating me <laughs> I swear to God they must be obsessed because I I know when it goes up <laughs> well you <I> hope so <laughs> but it's like I can as soon as it goes up I can like refresh my feed to get it whereas like someone else is just like, what kind of wait yeah so yeah I, I would say I'm I do I do listen to the podcast all the way through do you, do you go back do you listen I don't think I've ever listened to our podcast yeah right it's good for numbers isn't it <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely don't think I've listened past Oh, maybe early days when we'd say some really outlandish stuff right off the top of the show. Just to make sure that we didn't say anything too hot? Well, no, I'd listen to it because I'd be like, oh, listen to this. Listen to what listen to what Dan said before. <laughs> I but think I've been throwing some edits in uh, for your sake. I've been throwing some edits in um, on our YouTube content um, just to, to emphasize some of the weird shit we do. Okay. Um, like a hook at the start of the show. No, not even a hook. Just like... I'll, sh- I'll show you afterwards, but last week when you were doing your uh, Triple oh. J impersonation, oh, no. I threw some edits in. So it's oh beautiful. I'll show you later. I like that you're a you're a video craftsman. Well, I'm I'm, I'm working on the on the art, Sam. But well, that's neither here nor there. Should we actually give some? Because our listenership is growing. Yeah, and I appreciate every single person that listens because it's been a it's been a grind for yeah, us. It has been, and we grind. it's been very humbling to see the love we've been receiving on socials and through wherever you're listening to this. But do, should we give people a bit of a different vinyl club. Should we give them a bit of insight into how we split? How the how the fucking sausage is made. Yeah, how the yeah, sausage yeah. is made. So like, between you and I. Yeah. Like, where do we specialize? What do we do? What do we do in the seventy eight amped? You know, what do you call it? The fucking on the in the admin. Yeah. Sure. Where does besides being how the voices behind the mic? <laughs> Get to know us. Get to know the seventy eight amped. The fellas. The, um, so, well, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to dox you or where you work, but your work is far more involved in social media. Yes, um, that is why you're the beautiful face of this organisation. I've worked in social media for probably like six years, mm. seven years, and he's good at it. Oh, I've, despite what the people say, <laughs> <laughs> the hate's actually stopped. 
Oh, really? Uh, oh. Yeah. Well, because you delete them for long enough, they they give up. <laughs> That's boring. <laughs> you, blo- <laughs> you block them, they don't come back. I'm gonna have to start hating you on, on you now. <laughs> <laughs> Can't block me. <laughs> well, yes, I work. I've worked in social media for a while, so I handle the social side of things. Yep. The editing of all the social videos. Yep. Uh, the, I'd say maybe like, we balance the graphic side of things. I think you do the heavy lifting of the graphics. I, I I throw occasional graphics together just to like mm. get podcasts out the door and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm probably more the creative, and you're probably more the, you're the relationships man. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm, you're the one booking the bands for the shows. Yeah. Look. Yeah. I'm on. If you if you if you're communicating with us on anything that isn't socials, you're probably talking to me. And if you're talking on socials, you're talking to me. Yeah. And um, I watch our views like it's fucking. <laughs> I sit there. I should just have a live tracker. And then if you're, if you, when you hear the thing, I'm the one, I'm the guy on the ones and twos, uh, bouncing mm. sound levels poorly often. Um, but, but without you, this show doesn't come, go to air because I don't, I don't fucking know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting, I'm balancing, I'm, I'm, I'm making the podcast, uh, in terms of you are the end result. But, you know, that's but okay. In this ecosystem that is, yeah, our music community, yeah, we need you to have the podcast ready to go. And I need to push people to go listen to exactly. it. Exactly. So, you know, we're without each other. Symbiotic. We we are symbiotic. Yeah. Without each other, we're we're useless. Which it's true. It's so true. I'm pushing people to links that don't work, and and no one's listening to my podcast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, your mum is. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Or sometimes she she dips out. Oh, I tell you what, my yeah. mum said something to me the other day. Oh no. That was so humbling. Oh no. She goes, oh, because I was saying to them. Because one thing we haven't spoken about on the show was we posted about Scissor's show. Mm. Scissor commented, liked, and reshared our stuff, Huge. which is 20 million followers. That's unreal. Thanks, Sis. Thanks, Sis. Uh, Sis. <laughs> Friend of the show. Of, yeah. Um, but I was telling my parents what that meant for our views because, you know, they ride the waves as we do, you know, yeah. as loving parents do. And I was explaining to my parents over dinner, oh, you know, we had. 700,000 views on this video um, and mum goes oh where was that was that on TikTok was it and I was like yeah it was on TikTok but Instagram's going quite well as, as well and she goes oh that's good because every time I see your videos I see it doesn't have many likes and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> I go oh nice cold Mrs. Muggleton she goes oh so I always give it a like and I'm really glad people are starting to like it now I'm like Fuck. <laughs> That's a bit of um, how's your little podcast going? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was the biggest backhand. Com- like she was trying to be sweet. Yeah. But fuck, it hurt. Like there's, That's there's like, nothing it's like... from your mum too. Yeah, there's nothing like a parental put down to really put you in your place. So on that note, but, I gave you some homework. Yes, before we jump into that, I've got, I've got uh, two things. Oh, yes. Um, oh, yeah, we're diving into the socials. Oh, Max has been stacked over text. That's right. Yeah, close. Um, I've got two things. I've got two things to jump before we jump into there. One is a, almost bigger, um, almost bigger than uh, scissor sharing us was we got reshared by the king of TikTok. No, we didn't get reshared. Sorry, we got liked. I want to take that back. We got liked by the king of TikTok. Viral clips. <laughs> Did we really? Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? The other one. It's always it's just like random clips that have been posted like a week later after they've already gone viral. And it's just like, did you see the da 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 happened? Yeah, and it's right. all like the weirdest voiceover. Oh, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's huge. Uh, bigger than anything else we've ever done. Um, the Has, other thing... Oh, sorry. If he or she uses our stuff, I'm expecting a tag. We don't expect one. You won't be getting one. But if they do, great stuff. Um, You'll see me commenting. <laughs> excuse, hello, excuse me. That's that's my stuff. Nice tag, fuckwit. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. I'll quote that now. I'll put that in. <laughs> And then if we get the tag, like, thanks for the tag, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, keep it consistent. <laughs> uh, the other thing I want to do, and this is something we do want to encourage, uh, if you're if you're in a band, um, you know, if you're making music, send us some of it. We'll have a listen. Yeah. Um, this is a song that was, we always say it's from the DMs, but this one was uh, via email, old school. Oh, facts. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, like straight, straight facts. Straight facts, mate. Always, always dropping them. Just trying to find what this person's name is. Jack. Shout out Jack Barrett uh, from Manchester in the UK. Oh, he's from Manchester. Uh, whose band Super Morza, or Supero Morza, sorry, uh, shot us their track, Life Jacket. Is he a real estate agent for Taurus Property in Cooper? Yep. That's, That's the one. Um, we both had a listen. This this week you're joining me on the on the ride that is the, the song in the DMs. 
And um, oh, Jack Barrett from um, Cooper Real Estate. He's definitely not in a in a grunge band. Um, that's for sure. No, he can't scuff his loafers. <laughs> <laughs> um, Life Jacket by Supero Morza. Hardcore, hardcore stuff. It's like, well, when we were listening to it before, I said it's like old turnstile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really fast. Picture like skateboarding down a hill on yep. Tony Hawk. Yep. That's it. Just downhill jamming. Yeah. And then you jump off like a 50 foot half pipe. Yep. Yep. It's not a half pipe, it's just a jump. Because if it was a half pipe, you come back down. It really reminds me of bands. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> it really reminds me of bands out of that, like that Gilman, Gilmore Street. Oh my God. Gilman Gilmore Girls. Fuck. Gilman. <laughs> Gilman Street. Gilden. Scene. Gilden. Out of the Gilden scene. Now that's the scene. Out of the Gilman Street scene, uh, which is in Oakland. Oh my. What does unpowered? Um, that you know that eventually sp- spread out like Green Day and the Offspring, yeah. but had like Rancid and Operation Ivy and stuff like that. Yeah, that turned up to eleven with the pits just going ham. Yeah, it's like, a lot of. I'd say it's like Swatting B pit. Yeah, yeah, it is. There'll be there'll be there'll be blood noses in that pit. Yeah, there's no barriers. No, fuck no. On the stage, flipping into the crowd. This feels like an awesome. This feels like the kind of band that you want to see in someone's basement. Yeah, like. Before this goes big, go see Sparrow like Rad Bar in the Wollongong. Oh yeah, yeah. Fuck, I miss that place. The I fr- never went. But the I- top part, the top part of Crowey. Yeah. R.I.P. R.I.P. In <laughs> Brisbane, anyway. It's in Sydney still. Yeah, at the old bald face stag. But anyway, that's. A, I would say thumbs up for me for Life Jacket. Yeah, I liked it. Um, Might go on my gym playlist. Yeah, throw it in there. Mm. Oh, you're lifting big. You're fucking. Oh, I don't lift big. Doing just picking up just a couple of two hundreds. Keep. <laughs> 200 grams, you can do better than that. But picking yeah. up a couple of like, you know, 10 kilos and just practicing moshing, just throwing fists. Well, it was a, well, that's why I had to cancel my first gym membership, but that's a good idea. Yeah, I know. Um, but yes, I gave you some homework. You sent last me some week. homework, yes. We, I wanted you to review Feel Something by Movements because I said it was quite a, it was a fairly big album for me at the time. Very much like that album. Yeah. And it was sort of a forming <clears throat> or a, an important album in the new wave of like emo punk bands from 2015 to now. Yep. There are a few bands that sort of led the charge there. Citizen, Movements, like Story So Far were still doing their thing. Neck Deep were coming up. So it was quite a big album in that time. So I was keen to get your thoughts. Yeah. I mean, before we get into the music, I have an, a, a formal apology to make. You don't like it. Uh, no, no, no. Hold up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, Sorry. Whoa, son, Jumping whoa. the gun. Whew. Hurting myself before mum can hurt me again. <laughs> um, I, I have to offer a formal apology to um, to Movements. They're not, in fact, from... I can't remember the name of the town. Um, Concha Hocken in Pennsylvania. No, that was Will Yip, their Will producer. Will Yip, their producer. Yeah, I, I got that wrong. That was my mistake. They're from Rancho Santa Margarita in California, just outside Orange County there. Which is where Knock Loose is from. Yeah, well, there you go. Um, so, huge apologies if any of our um, if any of our uh, listeners were heading towards uh, Concha, Hocken. Concha Hocken to to no, you said it very clearly that Will Yip was from Concha yeah, but I think in my mind I I think I was saying like Will Yip was in the band. No, he was a producer. We said yeah, that. On yeah, the, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So I think you're overthinking. We call that the Yip slip in the uh, in the industry. That one, but um, no, we get that wardrobe yeah. malfunction. Exactly, exactly. But onto the music. Feel something. Look. <laughs> All right. Did it make you feel something? I've got some thoughts. I'm ready. I've got some thoughts. Um, Hit me where it hurts. It's very much within the punk realm. It's the antithesis of pop punk. Like it's Mm. almost anti-melodic. Like it's going so far to not be poppy that it is trying the... (laughs) Sorry, I'm just being papped here while I'm I'm talking. Um, This is beautiful. Continue. Um, yeah, it's very anti-melodic. It's very post-hardcore. There's a lot going on, but not at the same time. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's stripped back. It kind of, when I was listening to the album, it kind of faded into the background a lot of the time. Okay. No, I get what, yeah. Because the guitars aren't very distorted. No. They're crunchy, I'd say. They're crunchy, but also song to song... There's not that much difference between those guitars. It's Mm-mm. they're the same general vibe. 
I reckon from Daylily onwards, yeah, they all blur. Yeah, even even in Daily and Daylily and Color Blind, Color Blind. Well, I'm, I'm looking at my notes here. Daylily and Color Blind would be the ones I would say were probably my favorites on yeah. the album. I still wouldn't jump to them. Okay. Um, I, I in my notes I wrote, wrote down a number of times that I kind of like would fade out in a song and I'd have to go back and start again because I was like, oh, I, I kind of, it just sort of blended and I have to listen to it a couple of times and then I'd be like, it's still kind of just fading. Yeah. The thing, okay. Um, the lead singer at one point really sounds like Morty from Rick and Morty. Yeah, I And then I that. couldn't get that out of my head. Patrick Miranda. Patrick Miranda, especially in uh, in Full Circle when he gets the spoken word bit. Yeah. And he's like, oh, uh, Rick, what, what are you doing, Rick? <laughs> <laughs> um. But shout out, shout out movements. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not putting this in a playlist. Um, if I was going to listen to this again, it would be you'd have to do it all in one go, because it's just it's it's just a it's a it's a block. Yeah. Um, and it would it would if I was happy and buoyant going to this, it would kill my mood, like it would ruin my day. <laughs> Which is not to say that it's a bad thing. It's just like don't go into this expecting a fun time. You, no, it is. You'll quite feel heavy. something, fam. I like that. Thank you. Well, overall, out of overall, 10, I'm not jumping to listen to it again. Yeah, I, it's it's very much like listeners know that I am not huge on lyrics when it comes to the music. Like I no, don't. You're sit not there a and, lyrics man, are you? I don't let the lyrics like like I like I like oh, I like I'm not like you know I can't not hear lyrics. You know what I mean? But like I'm not sitting there going like analyzing the lyrics and being like, how does this? Reflect my fair. life or something yeah. like that. But like to me, like the lyrics just seem to be part of like the musical experience. This is an album that you go to for the lyrics and the music kind of happens mm. at the same time. Um and for that in that sense, it's not for me. Yeah. But I think if if you're looking for a you know, a deep and meaningful experience that's gonna make you feel a bit sad, you're gonna this is gonna sit so well for it's you. It's gonna hit you right in the right in the feels. Right in the Google. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, one day if I'm sad. I reckon I could put this album on. on. But for 99% of the rest of my time, I don't think so. No, fair enough. Yeah. Well, you've got one for me. I do. Before we wrap up, because we've been keeping people a lot here. We, we, this episode has gone on. Um, this is easily our longest episode. Um, I, bought, I bought some options for you um, in the sense that I wasn't 100% sure if the first one um, was going to be appropriate. And then I realized yep. it was. Um, the, first, the one that I want to give you is actually two. Oh, that's a lot of homework. It's two discs. Oh, two discs. And it's an album that I know you've listened to. Oh, okay. It's an album that I know you actually don't mind. Okay. If it's Vampire Weekend, it's going out the window. It's not Vampire Weekend. I swear to God. I'll reimburse you, but I'm throwing it. Ah, oh, Viva La Vida. Yeah, the French album. Um, oh, and Prospects March. Yeah. So what's the go here? So, Viva La Vida is the album. Like, it's the... It's the um, you know, the original, the base album, if you will. Mm. Um, the, it's it's top to tailed. Then Prospects March was all the B-sides and deep cuts that they wrote in the sessions that they didn't include on the main album, but that are all relevant. So um, there's two. There's another version of Lost that's got a Jay-Z feature on it. Um, Life in Technicolor 2. Life in Technicolor 2, which is just Life in Technicolor, but with lyrics. It's a lot better. It's a lot better. Um, it's Rainy Day and Glass of Water were songs that were written to be included on the album but got cut due to time. Um, so I think as an album, to me, it's one of those ones that you should listen to like with both because I think they are both... I think they collectively are the like the whole thing. Yep. And you can... On, on I think, Spotify and Apple Music now, the default Viva La Vida version is called Viva La Vida Prospects <coughs> March Edition. Yeah. So... I like it. I, I, I think you should listen to both. Um yeah. You should really put your vinyls in like a plastic. Sleeve. I've got some plastic on order. I just haven't got around to it yet. Yeah. It protects it. I'm excited. Yeah. So it's a good album. I like the artwork. Great album. Um Lame is. And the 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 the, the, the art the, book in there. The, also the, quite cool. Where is it? There's a little art book in here that is, oh. is further detailing. Oh. All the lyrics are done in quite an interesting See, this is why I love vinyls. Yeah, I know. Little collectibles. Little collectibles. Um, it's the physical form of the it's musical the tactile art. it's tact you can touch it you can feel it you can tact with it um yeah right, so well, I, that's that's your homework for the week is tell you what prospects march edition of viva la vida by cold play i'll give you a bit of a preview i liked that song viva la vida yeah and and life in technicolor too right roll right liked those ones well good start 
Um, vinyl thoughts? Um, no. <laughs> what are you? No. 